Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to my basement. Welcome to the channel. I wanted to do a video on the uh, the design and the assembly of the lower control arm for the front suspension, what's going to be the A-arm suspension on the Baja that I'm building right now, specifically the new chassis. What I have here is a prototype that I made for the lower control arm out of foam board. I do this so that I can get a rough idea of what it is that I'm looking for. Before I do this, I just do paper cutouts, and these are what I'll make all sorts of changes to and make some tweaks and kind of get it pretty close to what I think I'm looking for. With that, I'll make this. With this, obviously, this is three-dimensional, and I can set some depths and really get an idea for what I'm looking for. And I even made it with tabs so I can actually bolt it onto my spindle. From here, this has been quite, quite a road, quite a process getting to this point and I'll show you the the two other designs I had before this but before I do that I want to take you outside and show you the plasma cutting of the plates for this and the grinding of the pieces to get them ready for welding
All right, so what you just saw was me plasma cutting and grinding the plates. Let me show you what, what got me to that point. I already told you that I had made the, uh, the shape of my control arm out of the foam board. And leading up to that, I had made the, uh, I made this in Bentec, but you can just do this on, this is just construction paper, lay out what you want. That was the first form. Once I had the three dimensional piece, then I made templates, the side pieces, you know, cause I needed all of that. So using this three dimensional piece, I was able to lay out these side templates. So what I did when I had all of those templates is I took them and I traced them onto eighth inch masonite, same stuff that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. I transferred them onto these and on these templates, I made these a little bit smaller than the actual true to size templates so that they would allow for my plasma cutter. Because what I did, if you saw in the video clip, is I just clamped this onto the metal and then I just follow it around with my plasma cutter. But in order to do that, you need to make these a little bit smaller so that you have some room for your plasma cutter tip. That's how I got to the point where I'm at now, where I've got the pieces that I need out of the steel Next step will be to start fabricating these, but like I said, that's gonna be video two. What I wanna show you right now is how I got to this point of the design. This is a jig that I made for my wheel. It holds the wheel and the spindle It holds these at the proper elevation that, um, if you've watched my other videos, I'm designing this for 33 to 35 inch tires, which means my average is 34. So I'm kind of designing this around a 34 inch tire, which means that my center should be roughly 17 inches, which it is. So this stand actually holds the wheel at the same elevation that it would be if I had one of the tires mounted on here. So the first thing that I did when I was coming up with this is I took this jig up and I, I pulled the front suspension or at least the spindle and some of the control arms off of my existing chassis because I'm really happy with that design. I just know that this design I want it to be a little bit wider and a little bit stronger. So I'm mimicking a lot of the geometry and whatnot that's on my chassis right now. So I brought this up and I set it up on my existing chassis and I just extended the wheelbase, I think two inches, just to give it a little bit better stance. And I think I made it one or two inches longer wheelbase as well. But I literally set this up where it needs to be. And then I just took measurements from the spindle to the chassis and I got my offsets and jotted all that down on a piece of paper so that I had a rough idea of what I, with that information, then I laid out which I just showed you in Bentec, a completely flat tubular control arm. And that was actually this. This is a, a flat tubular control arm that is actually really good. I thought this was gonna be my main design. Um, I actually fabricated it, I welded it, I even welded it solid because I thought this was gonna be my go-to design. Um, but what happened is, well, I'll show you. So once I had all this mocked up, I was able to come down here and actually, you know, put it together like it's going to be. This is going to be the elevation of the wheel and the tire. And at the other end of the control arm, I know that because my chassis right now is roughly 16 inches off the ground, I know that I can set that 16 inches up. And I was able to get an idea like how the range of motion is going to be and I was actually I was actually really good with that. And you can start looking at a lot of things. And what I realized is, at full droop, because this control arm is flat, I wasn't going to get as much droop as I originally wanted. The reason is, the center of the combo spindle that's on my Baja right now is right in the middle of the axle. So it's up here. So with that setup, the control arm is already probably five inches higher up. And that would help 
with my droop. Well, on this chassis, on this design, because I wanted to bring both of my pivot points inside the wheel, I had to keep a fair amount of distance apart on these pivot points, so I actually brought them both down so that I could push them in. And that's fine. I'm real. I, I knew that that was going to be a little bit of an issue moving forward because it lowers my control arm about five inches. Yeah, that's going to affect things like your ground clearance and, and obviously your droop and things like that. So when I assembled this, I realized because it's flat, it's going to affect my droop. And with my design on this go-around, I want to get as much droop as I'm getting right now and on the suspension that I have right now, it gets a lot of droop. And I don't want to give any of that up. So, essentially what it told me is, this control arm won't work because it's flat. What I need is a control arm that comes out flat, but then angles up and goes up towards the chassis. So unfortunately, that made this design no good. So I needed to change it. So then I came up with this design. This is essentially the same control arm that you were just looking at. However, it's got a kick in it right here. What I did is I took the connection point down here and I brought it up six inches and I made the kick right where the shock mounting location is gonna be. Now I know that that weakens this, but this is not done and had I gone with this, I would have had some um, something built up in here to give it a lot of strength. But you know, when I was designing this and I was mocking it up, it's just one of those things where I was just looking at it and for for no absolute reason, I can't I can't give you an absolute reason. I just decided I didn't like it. I felt like I felt like I was trying too hard to make the tubular design work. Um, cuz I started kind of getting a nag in in my head that was saying this probably needs to be a boxed control arm. Um, I'm, I'm giving up too much by trying to make it tubular. So I brought this design as far as I got it, just so that I could see kind of how it looks. And then I decided that's probably not the route I should be going. That's when I decided to go with the, the boxed control arm. So that's when I came up with this prototype. Again, it follows all of the same dimensions. It's got the same offsets the same lengths it's essentially the same two control arms that you just saw the only difference is it's boxed instead of tubular and it has the same elevation change of six inches just like the one I just showed you so it goes on here it seems to satisfy the droop by having this six inch kick um, and it still has good range of motion so at that point I decided the next step was to actually cut one out tack it together and see how it looks and essentially that brings us to where we are I've now got the templates you've seen me plasma cut it you've seen me grind it and clean it up the next step is to um, like fabricate it because I need to make some bends and breaks and make sure that all pieces come together I need to whip up a little jig so that I can put it in there and tack it um, and then actually try it and see how it works and find out if that's a design that I'm going with or not. So that's going to be it for this video. Part two, I'm going to pick up right where I left off here um, with what I just told you. So thanks for watching this video. I hope to have the other one out in a couple of days here. And I hope it's helping you guys, motivating you, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.